fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Beloved in the Lord, we welcome you to this special service of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. We pray and ask God to continue to guide all of us and to strengthen us in times like this. We continue the service by singing from Presbyterian Hymnary 702. Let us thank God for how far he has brought us. Yes, we are in challenging times. However, the Lord is still with us. The love of God is still with us. Let us thank God for his love for this nation, for his love for the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, for his love for your family, for his love for your friends and loved ones. Thank God. Let us also go to God with confession of hearts, asking God to forgive us all our sins that we have committed. Sins that we have committed as a nation, as individuals, as a church. Let's go to God and ask for forgiveness. Let's also pray and invite the Holy Spirit to lead us in this special service. Even as we are reaching out to people through this medium. May the Lord himself speak to us through his servant. Let us end with the Lord's prayer by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen the scripture reading for this special service is taken from psalm 23 the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. <laughs> Oh, I need me. 
and of our living God, we are grateful to you for this morning and for the opportunity of God to share your word with your people. We soak the preaching and teaching of your word in your Holy Spirit and ask, O oh God, that you will open our spirits and our hearts to receive your word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, who alone is our Lord. Amen. Amen. I speak to you this morning on the theme, I will fear no evil. And my anchor text is verse four, which says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Psalm 23 is one of the commonest and best known Psalms of the Bible. I have met several people who can recite the whole of this Psalm in a few seconds. The Psalm, which is Psalm 23, which, which was written by David, is a picture of a good shepherd who takes his sheep out for grazing. The basic idea in this Psalm is that when sheep are in the hands of a good shepherd, they, that is the sheep, can fully relax knowing that the good shepherd will surely take good care of the sheep. David himself used to be a shepherd when he was a young boy. Although he spent more years of his life in the palace than on the fields as a shepherd boy, it looks like images of shepherding never left his mind. According to the text, one is left in no doubt that David, the author, really knew the definition of a good shepherd. In the psalm read to us, David focuses on the sustaining, nurturing, and motherly attributes of God. He then concludes that the sustaining, nurturing, and motherly attributes of God are like that of a good shepherd. The force of David's argument in this text is that if God, that is Yahweh, himself is your shepherd, certain fantastic and wonderful things will follow. These include one, the sheep will not be worried. This is what he means by saying, I shall not want. Some people have taken the phrase, I shall not want, to mean I will not lack any physical wealth. But this has nothing to do with physical wealth. Rather, it means if God himself is my shepherd, then I can be fully relaxed in life. Two, if Yahweh or God himself is our shepherd, the sheep will always be properly led and fed. And this is what he means in the text when he says, he leads me to lie down in green pastures and he restores my soul. For any normal sheep, green pastures represent great food, good food, good diets, and the best feeding environment. When the sheep is properly fed within a good feeding environment, its soul, its spirit is calmly refreshed or restored. It is like when you are very, very hungry in life and uh, one day somebody gets, gives you good food and good soup. You will realize that your whole body is restored and relaxed. To restore is to regroup. So the lesson here is that if I allow God himself to shepherd my life, I may be worn out in life. But when I get reconnected to God in prayer and the word, he will make sure that I am spiritually restored. In the verse 4, which is the anchor text, it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now, there are those who seem to teach that if God directs or shepherds your life, nothing bad should come your way. That is not true. Such people tend to hide all the negative things that happen to them in life. They live lives of lies. I have met people who have taught people that if you are a Christian, you will never get sick. Meanwhile, they themselves are wearing glasses. You can't hide them. You don't have to hide your challenges in life. You don't have to. The Bible teaches that if God directs your life, if God is your shepherd, it is possible that you will walk through the valleys of the shadow of death. It is possible that you will be faced with very dark sides of life. It is possible that things may not go out normally for you. It is therefore not abnormal if those who love God get sick. It is therefore not abnormal if those who love God lose their loved ones or lose their jobs or run out of money. It is not abnormal. What is abnormal in the Christian faith is that when dark things happen in your life and you run away because you've forgotten who is with you, David says, I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death and not fear it, and not fear it. We may be faced with a pandemic of coronavirus in our world today, but it doesn't mean that we love God less or God loves us less. We are now in this world in a situation where we are walking through the valleys of the shadow of death called coronavirus. We have heard that over 225,000 people have been infected with the virus. Over 9,000 people have died in this world right now that I'm speaking in Ghana. Thank God that most of the cases that we have identified in Ghana are working out well and we are trusting that they will all come out of it. There are several ways, brothers and sisters in Christ, by which one may react when life gets tough, when one gets to the edge of the valley of the shadow of death. This include one, denial. You can deny that nothing is happening. And that's like burying your head in the sand. Something is happening, you have buried your head in the sand, but everybody can see your back. They can see your buttocks. It's only your head that is in the sand. And so denial psychologically is not a good thing. I've met so many people. We, when they are very sick, how are you? You say, I'm fine. You know you are not fine. It's denial. We've got to learn how to face situations. Another way of facing hard situations in life, like the coronavirus situation, is to panic or to have extreme fear over anxiety. One of the former presidents of the United States of America once said, his name was Franklin Roosevelt, we have nothing to fear in this world but fear itself. To fear fear is the most dangerous thing. So the Bible says in 1 John that perfect love casts out fear. And if Jesus is love and he fills us, then it casts out fear from us. It's very, very important that we understand that if we keep panicking in this situation, the panicking will just add more negative things to our problems. The panicking will not solve any problem. It will make things worse. And so panicking is not an option. A third option to take that some people take is foolish self-courage. That I've met people in this world, they have what I call foolish self-courage. When a lion is coming, they say, we're going to face the lion. And you know the lion is stronger than you, and the lion will eat you up. It's called foolish self-courage. And that's not a good option in a situation like this. But there's a fourth option, which I want to recommend, and that is hope in the God of heaven. Of all the four listed options, I suggest that you avoid the first three, and I recommend that the last one, namely hope and trust in the God of heaven, should be the option for all of us in Ghana, for all of us in this world. This is because the God of heaven, like David the shepherd found, is a specialist in crisis situations. 
God is a specialist in crisis situations. How do I say this and why do I say this? I do remember in the book of Exodus, chapter 14, how he led the Israelites to cross the Red Seas. The Israelites were in slavery. God wanted to deliver the Israelites out of slavery. God brought 10 plagues in Egypt, but Pharaoh would not let them go. Until the last one, when Pharaoh realized that the first ones of, the, of all the Egyptians were dying. And so he allowed them to go. He released the slaves, the Israelites, to go. When the Israelites left Egypt, they were led by Moses. They walked very, very far, thousands of them. And God asked them, through Moses, to come before Pihahiros, between Migdol and the sea, opposite Baal Zephon. It was told to the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, that the Israelites had fled. But because the Israelites were used for the Egyptian economy, when the Israelites left, the Egyptian economy was going down. So Pharaoh said, I've made a, I've made a mistake. So Pharaoh then assembled all his horses and chariots. He had some 600 special chariots that he would normally not use. But for the first time, he used all those 600 special chariots, including all the other old chariots, all of them. And he assembled army captains and lots of soldiers to go and pursue the Israelites. They pursued the Israelites and they overtook the Israelites at Pihahiros before Baal Zephon. When the Israelites' elders saw the armies coming, the soldiers of the Egyptians coming, they raised their voices, not to God, but to Moses, and said, Moses, do you want us to come and die here in this wilderness? Who will bury us here? Didn't we tell you in those days when we were in Egypt that it was better for us to be slaves? It was you who said that God says he wants to deliver us. So they complained. They did not want to just die in the wilderness. Moses told them, do not be afraid. Stand still. That is Exodus chapter 14, verse 13. Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh, which he will accomplish for you today. In verse 14, he says, the Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Then when God himself heard it, God said to Moses, tell the children of Israel to march forward. The Israelites were in a crisis situation. Ahead of them was the sea. They didn't know how to swim well. Behind them were the Egyptians. They were in a crisis situation. But Yahweh, who had brought them that far, said they should march forward. And when they marched forward, they were going to march into the ocean. And that would have taken a lot of faith to do that. When they took the step to march forward, then God said to Moses, raise up your rod. Moses raised up the rod, pointed the rod to the, to the sea, and then the sea parted. Now, people have several interpretations about this, but I want to tell you, as a theologian, that if nothing strange had happened, it would not have been recorded. It was recorded because that day, that day, something significant happened in the history of the Israelites. The Red Sea parted into two, and the people of Israel were able to walk through a sea, the sea like they walked on dry land. I am telling you today that the God of heaven that we worship, he specializes in crisis situations. And when there is crisis situation, he decides to glorify himself. I know we are in a crisis situation thinking about this coronavirus. And I believe that is a time when God is rearranging things in life for us. God is rearranging his world for us. God is rearranging his church for us. And we will see the glory of God and see it soon. I do recall one day, one day when the, when Jesus and his disciples were in a boat, and the boat was about sinking, I've told you that Yahweh, our God, he knows how to specialize in crisis situations. The boat was about sinking, and the disciples were panicking. Jesus just got up, and he just spoke, and the storm was calmed. 
This is a time when we must believe and trust in our God because David knew this God. And that's why he was able to say, even though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. I shall fear no evil. This is the same God who is with us. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who speaks and the storms are calmed. That is why the hymn says, be gone unbelief. My Savior is near. May every unbelief be gone. Because I do believe that God will take us through this. For all of us who are just panicking left and right, I suggest to you with all seriousness, let us take all the rules and regulations because these are wisdom from God. The, the, the rules and regulations, the practical steps that we have to take that the Ministry of Health has given us, let us take them seriously. But let us never panic because we are believers in the God who created the heavens and the earth. I do remember at one time, Israel was in a crisis situation because they had, they, they had been challenged by the people of the, the, the Philistines. And they were led by a giant called Goliath. But God took the Israelites out of the problem. There may be giants that come into our lives like coronavirus giants. But I do remember in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, when David said to King Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it rose against me, I caught it by the beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. I have come today to tell all Ghanaians, to tell all Presbyterians, that that same God that David knew, that God who delivers us from the paws of lions and the paws of bears will deliver us from this situation and that we will pass through it and pass through it quickly. I pray to God in the mighty name of Jesus that the Lord God will let this pass with speed, will let this virus pass with speed, will let it pass with speed and that the glory of God will be seen. Hallelujah. Amen. One thing that I find exciting about God though is this, that our God always knows what he is doing. He's always on the throne. God has a way of rearranging his world. If you know how to play draft and you meet a good person, somebody who knows how to play draft well, sometimes the way you arrange the draft, you may not understand it. But sometimes when God wants his world to go in a particular direction and it's not going, he, has, he finds other ways of making it work. When God wants his church to move in a certain direction and the church does not move, God has a way of rearranging things and rearranging his church. What is very interesting is this, that in the Bible, in the New Testament, there is something that we learn, which we call the gathered church, where, we, where the church was gathered in Jerusalem, in Acts chapter 2, in Acts chapter 4, the church was gathered and the people were happy, worshiping God and so on. But then, when the church was gathered only in Jerusalem, the word was not spreading. So God allowed persecution to happen. And so the church was scattered. And in the minds, perhaps, of the people in Jerusalem, they may have been crying and weeping. But when the persecution came and the church scattered, that was how the church was able to reach the ends of the earth. God always does something. He uses even bad situations to rearrange things for us. It's not God himself who brings evil. But when evil comes, he knows how to rearrange things for us. I pray to God that we ourselves will sit back and try to learn the new thing that God is doing in God's world. Our God is a specialist in crisis situations. Anytime crisis is created, he is watching if we will invite him into the situation. We have crisis now in Ghana. We have crisis now in our world, and we have invited God into the situation. I do believe with all my heart that he who calmed the storm at the sea with his word will calm the storm of coronavirus and any other crisis that ever come into our lives. Our God is bigger than any problem that we face. Psalm 23 says, 
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Verse 4 says that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. May God kick out every fear from our hearts. May God give us the peace to live, even as we follow all the practical wise steps that have been given to us by the ministry of health. May God give us, give us calmness of spirit, calmness of soul as a nation. And may God speed up the time when this virus will pass. May God protect this nation. May God protect his people. May God protect Africa. May God protect his world so that all the glory will be his. The last verse of Psalm 23 says, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's the last part that I want to say, that when God has taken us out of this, when we have prayed and trusted God and he gets us out of it, let us remember that it was God who helped us. And let us worship God more. May God give grace to the scientists to be able to find solutions to the problem. But let us tell the scientists that when God has given them the wisdom and they, are, they have found the solutions, let them give praise to God. When the ministries have given us directions and the virus is gone out of our country, let the ministries give praise to God and not to themselves. When Christians have prayed and the thing has subsided, let us give praise to God and God alone. And let us live in the house of the Lord forever. May God strengthen us. Let us live as children of hope, children of the God of hope. For our God, Yahweh, is always a God of hope. May God bless you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, I pray for every person who is hearing me, that, Lord God, you will translate faith and hope into their hearts. You will translate faith and hope into their spirits. Lord, may your Holy Spirit Oh God, we even interpret the word preached to God into their souls and spirits. Lord, may you strengthen our nation. Lord, anybody who is losing hope, may you grant the person courage. May you grant the person grace to be able to hope in the God of heaven, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we do believe that this dirty virus of oh God will pass. Lord, let it pass and pass quickly. We are praying for our nation in the name of Jesus Christ that you will help us to get out of this. We are praying for the Ministry of Health. We are praying for the Ghana Health Services. We are praying for scientists who are trying to find antiviruses. Lord, give them wisdom. Lord, give them direction. Lord, bless them, bless them, bless them. Lord, we are praying for those who, are, who have been made sick out of this virus, that Lord, you would touch and heal them, touch and heal them. And Lord God, I pray in your name, heal our nation now. Heal our nation now. All of us are disturbed. Lord, heal our hearts. Heal our souls. Heal our spirits. Let this whole nation hope in the God of heaven. Lord, bring us together at this time and grant, oh God, and grant, oh God, that soon and very soon, in a very short time, we will hear that, Lord, this disease has passed us. Let it pass and go. Let it pass and go. Let coronavirus pass and go. Because we have prayed in the, re in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Beloved, we are entering into a time of prayer. Let us thank God that he is still our shepherd and he is still in charge of every situation we find ourselves in today. Let us together as a family give thanks and praise to God. We are thanking God in our situation as we face this pandemic face to face. For us, we may think that the situation is getting out of hand. But in Papa's message, we heard it clearly. God has a way of rearranging his world. Thank him for this he knows what he's doing. We are his sheep. And he is the shepherd. We do not have to worry. Again, the word of God admonished us that we must not be afraid. Because we have a great shepherd. Who is always with us. Pray that if there is anyone who is bound with the spirit of fear. May the great shepherd... Grant that person hope 
in times like this. Commit the leaders of our nation, leaders of religious bodies into the hands of God. The Lord will give them the direction, especially of our nation, Ghana, and the Christian community. Again, let us pray in a special way for countries that are affected and all the people who are playing different roles to curtail this challenge. That the power of God will take control over everybody. Amen. Please, if you have any inquiries or you want to fellowship with any of the Presbyterian Church or Ghana congregations, please do not hesitate to call the numbers on your screen. God bless you. Now the blessing of God Almighty, who alone is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us all now and evermore. Amen. Amen.